Hey guys, what's up? It's me again, and we are going to continue with the Action RPG tutorial series. And in today's one, we're going to finish off, effectively finish off the enemy attacking state where we can actually take damage and the player can actually die finally in our game. So, uh, before we get started, uh, if we just play the game right now, because from that last video that we had, we did have that one. I wouldn't call it a bug, but uh, more of like a missing line of code. I guess, which I guess is kind of like a bug. I guess it classifies as being a bug. But if we play it here, if we get close enough, you can see that he's still facing down. He's not really uh, attacking the player or he's not looking in the direction. He knows that we're close, but we're not actually being attacked. Now, the way to fix that is if we go into our scripts, <coughs> if we go into the locate player scripts, we actually missed this line here, and we need to actually tell it to face the horizontal direction. Uh, that's my fault completely. I just, I guess I just missed that. Uh, not here. We're just going to type in direction, horizontal, and close that off. So that's the only fix that we need to do for that part of the script, and we're practically done. Now, onto the, the main show. We're actually going to need this for later. We're, like I said, we're going to work on the enemy attack because right now it is pretty bare. Let me drag this all into over here. But before we get into that section, we're actually going to look at the parent enemy object first. That's the first place that we're going to start. And we are going to start by adding in two new variables. Um, and we're going to start with... Uh, we're going to give it the can attack variable. And we're going to set that to true, of course, because right at the start, we need to set it to true so that they can attack. And the other one is the attack power. Attack power. And we're going to set that to one. So it's a fairly weak enemy. But I mean, this is just for demonstration purposes. Obviously, with your projects, you're going to you can change that to 10, 20, whatever number you want. Uh, just as a demonstration, we're going to keep it at one. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going into the step event. Now, if you remember when we worked on the player, we had the script execute, the sprite index, uh, as well as a, not a long switch statement, but a fairly long switch statement. In this case, mm, what we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same thing. So we're going to type in a switch. And in this one, we're going to obviously work on it depending on the direction that we're facing. So let me close that off so that we know that it's there. Let me just center this so that we can see it clearly, or you guys can see this a little clearer than before. But uh, the next step that we're going to do is we're going to add in a case for horizontal movement. Uh, horizontal. Oh. And don't forget to put in the brakes. So I'm going to put in the... Um, I'm going to put the skeleton in. This is what I like to do. This is my method. It works for me. Uh, you should use whatever method you feel comfortable with, but I like to put in the code skeleton first so that we can basically build off of that. So we have the case horizontal. We also need a, whoops, case. Uh, we'll start with up. Whoops. And we're going to break, of course. And then, of course, we need case down. And don't forget to break that at the end. Okay, so. Now, for the case horizontal, the first thing that we need to do is say if our, we're going to start using these variables here, the x offset and the y offset today. But we need to change these depending on the x direction and the y direction. So basically what we need to do here is if we are moving horizontally, so if our direction is horizontal, we need to then say if x dir is greater than zero we're going to do stuff and then else if xdir is less than zero we're going to do something else now this is about as complex as it's going to get for us at least at this stage or with this particular series it is after all a beginner's series or it's intended for beginners i wouldn't say it's for zero beginners i think you do still need to have some idea of some of the functions. I am planning on making an, an absolute 
zero level or level zero uh, tutorial series, but I'm still trying to figure out what kind of game we should make. Uh, it should be fairly simple and fairly easy to get, but at the same time introduces uh, people to the programming concepts in a way that is digestible, so I'm still thinking about that. In any case, what we're going to do for the X direction, if we're moving right, so let me just make a note of that here, uh, we are moving right, and of course this one we're moving left, right, left, left, right, moving left. Okay, so when we're moving right, we need to have the X offset. We, uh, I guess for now, we are going to use cell divided by two, just for now, just to test it out. And then the Y offset, we don't need it to be on a diagonal unless that's what you want for your uh, enemy's attack pattern. But for me, I'm just going to use cell two and zero. In a similar way, with moving left, we're going to have X offset. And we're going to set that to negative cell divided by two. And of course, for the Y, let me just scroll down a bit. We're going to have Y offset, and we're going to set that to zero. So they look identical, except one will spawn the projectiles on the left, which is this one, and the other one will spawn projectiles on the right, which is over here. Now for up and down, they too are going to look somewhat similar. But again, they are going to be different. So the first thing is X offset. And we remember, we need it to be right in the middle of where the enemy is. So we're going to set the X offset to zero. But this time we're going to have, since it's going to be above us, we need to have the Y offset. We're going to set that to negative cell divided by two. I hope that works. Um, if it doesn't, well, we're gonna, <laughs> we can fix that in this video. But uh, I hope it works the first time. I don't like to mess around too, for too long because it's just kind of off-putting and it's a bit of a waste of time in my opinion. But uh, anyway, we're going to keep going with the down direction. And this time with a Y offset. Whoops. Y offset. We're going to set that to cell divided by 2. Done. All right. So we're pretty much finished with... Almost everything. We're done with a step event. The last thing here is an animation end. So after the enemy attacks, we're going to allow it to attack again. So we need to tell it to can attack equals true. But you might be wondering, hey, we already set it to true. Well, that's going to come next, <laughs> actually. So let's go into our scripts. And all the way down here in enemy attack, we're going to tell it to actually do the attack. So for that, if you remember the melee, if I can find my melee attack, or really attacking in general, um, it's going to look similar to this. There are going to be a, maybe one or two changes. Uh, I wouldn't say anything major, but uh, it's going to look something like this. Anyway, let's close that out because we don't actually need it. In the melee attack, uh, in the melee attack script, what we're going to do is we're going to set a few local variables. So we're going to say var underscore x and I'm going to say uh, that is my x x offset um, I'm going to do this the slightly longer way y equals y offset and then again var creator equals object type object type now if you remember we have different object types we have the uh the immortal type which is things like walls and unbreakable things we have the friendly neutral and we have enemy so this being the enemy attack it will automatically store the object type here and then we have var and this one is our attack power so, uh, I'll call it power. Power equals attack power. Attack power. And we're going to multiply that by one. Actually, let's multiply that by half. 
Nah, let's multiply by one. <laughs> I was just trying to get a little bit more creative there so that I could, I don't know, try something out, but uh, guess maybe not in this case. In any case, let's keep moving. Um, the next thing that we need to do is, well, the bulk of the code here. So we're going to say if, and then put the brackets in just to make it safe. Uh, if do, 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 floor. Now remember, the floor value is basically if our number is a decimal, whenever we're checking, if it's a decimal, it will round it down, regardless of whether it's over 0 0.5, which naturally, uh, if you remember your maths, 0 0.5, you would round up. But when we floor something, we always round down, regardless of that decimal number. So if our floor image index, I think that's what it is, image index is greater than or is 2 or is greater than 2, then, oh, and do, 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 let me put this in brackets first. So basically double bracketing uh, because we need to make one more check. And if we can attack, let me space that out. Let me explain this line just a little bit because it's been a while since we actually programmed in the uh, player's attack pattern. But basically what it's going to do is it's going to check if our animation is at the second frame or third frame or fourth frame or whatever. You can change this number to whatever number you want to check. Um, I do recommend going against uh, using magic numbers like this. Uh, in this case, because every animation will likely be different, but considering it is a tutorial, I'm trying to make this as accessible to as many people as possible, especially since my resources are free, they are available. Um, just go check out in the description below or in the comment section. Uh, that'll be there for you guys. It's all free. Just don't use it for your commercial projects. They don't look that great anyway, so I'm not sure why you would. Um, but anyway, we are going to check if the animation is at the second frame or is greater than the second frame and at the same time if we can attack all right so that's just something to keep in mind so if we can attack then we're going to do whatever is inside this bracket of course first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set can attack to false done that's the first one and then we're actually going to spawn a bullet so with um with instance create ugh. instance create depth i forget i keep forgetting that x plus uh x here now i'll type it out and then i'll explain it so it'll be a little bit easier for me to explain it that way uh zero and then obj projectile not player projectile Really? The, I don't have an... Oh, parent projectile. Sorry. I keep forgetting the names of my resources because I'm actually working on this plus a few other projects at the same time. So it's a little bit hard for me to, uh, to keep everything kind of in line. I'll get you guys up to date on stuff about that at a later time. But for now, let's just keep going. Mm, with this one, what we're going to do is we're going to say speed equals zero. Okay, here's here's the deal. Um, I just want to, for now, for now, I just want to make it so that it's just melee attack. Um, if you want to make a shooting enemy, then of course you would change the speed to be one, two, or whatever. Uh, there are faster ways to do this or more efficient ways to do this. But uh, I guess in a future cleanup video, not in the one that I have planned uh, coming up, uh, which is the next one after this, but uh, perhaps if I have the time to, I will create a, another cleanup video where we streamline absolutely everything in the game so that uses fewer objects, uh, has uh, fewer lines of code overall and reuses code wherever possible, but for now we'll just stick with this. So we'll set speed to zero. The creator will be 
the creator that we have here that we have stored. And of course, the power, power variable will be the power there. So here's what's happening. In this line here, we're going to say with the, with the bullet or with the projectile that we create, we're going to create it at the X offset and the Y offset, which explains this. And then we're going to create it on layer zero. And of course, we're going to create a parent projectile. Now the speed, we don't want it to move. This is a melee attack. So we're going to set speed to zero. The creator here is whatever we store up top here. Now, you might say, why don't you just type in object type here, right? Why don't I just type in object type? Well, I could do that, but the problem is that it will try to find, because we're calling it here in width, uh, it's trying, it will try to find uh, an object type related to this parent projectile, which it doesn't have, or it doesn't work, it won't work. So creator, uh, what was it again? creator. And of course, power here is self-explanatory. It's its own attack power, and we're going to feed that in. So that's all we're going to do for this. Let's test it out and see if it works. If it doesn't, uh, well, I'm going to have a few problems. But uh, it should work. Let's just wait for that to build out. Hopefully, it will work well for us. Let me scroll down. No enemy spawned. No enemy spawned. Okay, here we go. We have an enemy now. So let's whoop, see what happens if he attacks us. So he's, he's close. He's close, but uh, not close enough to be able to attack. So let's go back. Let's go back into the parent enemy. No, not parent enemy. Actually, yeah, let's just affect the parent enemy directly. And let's say from 32, let's go to 24. Let's drop down to 24. <clears throat> and let's try that again. Let's see if he gets close enough for us to actually be able to be hit by it. Um, hopefully, hopefully we can get hit by it. Oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. So there we go. We got hit. And then we died. So, okay, this is a good... Uh, this is a good opportunity to explain this. See this? This block here? That is um, our player enemy. Our Sorry, not our player enemy. Our enemy who, uh, melee box or whatever you want to call it. Uh, what's actually happening is that it's leaving it behind. It's not actually destroying it at the end of the uh, at the end of the attack animation. That's because, well, it didn't actually collide with anything so it didn't destroy anything. Uh, so we're going to fix that uh, in the cleanup video, which is coming up next. For now, guys, I hope this has helped you. If you found it useful, please leave a like. You guys know what to do. If you have any questions, then leave them in the comment section below. Again, all the video resources and all the series resources are in the comments and in the description. So go check that out when you have the time or if you want to get those free resources. For now, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.